Thank god that's over. In this video, I'll show you how to animate blocks in Minecraft. More specifically, smooth animations like this. I made a video in the past about moving individual blocks around, but that method doesn't allow rotation, and sometimes it can cause the player to have a stroke. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. What? Can I... Help! Another option for animating in Minecraft is stop motion. I was originally going to make a tutorial on that, but then I saw this on Reddit. How? Since there's absolutely no competing with that, I decided to work on this method instead. The general idea is to remodel an item, put it on an armor stand's head, then move the armor stand all over the place. That being said, I'd like to warn you that this method is a little difficult, especially for players who are new to commands. I would recommend familiarizing yourself with the basics of resource packs and scoreboards before trying this out at all. Alright, to get started, we have to have something to animate, so I'll go ahead and create a new world to work in. For this tutorial, I'll make a small doorway, which would look great right about... here. My idea is that this door will be a set of double doors, so they'll each open individually like this. Which means for the model for each door, we will have to have a 2x3 block of spruce planks. To make a model like that, we'll have to have a resource pack to put it in. So let's get started on that first. First thing you're going to want to do is go to your .minecraft folder. Then you'll go into your resource packs and create a new resource pack. For this resource pack, I'm just going to paste in the assets that I need, but if you're already familiar with resource packs, you can just create your own. Alright, once you have the basic outline of a resource pack, go into your textures folder, and then create a custom folder. In the custom folder, you're going to want to put any textures that you'll use for your model. In my case, I just pasted the spruce planks from a different resource pack, because that's all I need to use. Then, go into your models folder, and add a new folder called item. In the item folder that you just created, you'll want to go ahead and paste an item model from a default resource pack that'll be changed into the model that you plan on using for the animation. This can be whatever item you want. For the sake of example, I'm just going to go ahead and use a wooden axe. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sucks ass. Where the hell am I getting all these files that I keep copying and pasting into this resource pack? Well, I'll put a link in the description that links to a tutorial about how to extract the resource packs from the game so that you can just get default files to use. I will also be dropping this resource pack that I'm creating in the tutorial right now into the description, so you can just go ahead and download that and use it if you don't want to deal with any of this. Alright, now comes the fun part. Please note I'm using the word fun ironically. There's a bunch of different options you could use to make the model itself, but I personally use Blockbench just because it's really easy to learn and has a lot of options. Go to File, New, and then create a Java Block slash Item Model. You can name it whatever you'd like, but you just have to remember what you name it so that you can refer to it later. Because I'm working with a spruce door, I'll just name it Spruce Wall. The first thing to do in the modeling window is click this plus button, which will add a cube. As you can see, when I adjust the dimensions of the cube on the right hand side, you'll see the visuals display that change. From here, we can move the cube wherever you want to in the display area. I would like to point out the maximum size of a cube is 48 on all sides, so imagine a 3x3 cubic block. That's the max model you can create. If you want to do anything bigger, like this, you'll have to model it at half size in Blockbench, and then scale it up later in a coding section. The next thing to do is add textures to your model. Click the plus button in the bottom left that says Import Texture, and then import the textures that you pasted earlier into your resource pack in the custom folder. From there, you can just click and drag your textures onto each face of your model. 
Another issue that I ran into a lot working on this was that textures don't scale properly. So if you have a texture file that's just 16 by 16 on a face that's about 16 by 32, it might scale in a really weird way and squish or stretch the texture. To fix this, you can either adjust the view on the top left, like I'm doing here, or in some cases, this won't cut it, and you might have to change the actual file. So in my case, the texture file that I'm using is not actually a 16x16 16 16 texture, it's 32x48, so that it perfectly matches the largest face of this wall. Like I said, huge pain in the ass. I would highly recommend just downloading the files from the description if you're not used to working with resource packs or working with modeling. As you can see, the model now looks exactly how we wanted it to. When you're happy with your model, go to File, Export, and then export it as a block slash item model. Make sure that when you export this file, you're selecting the item folder in the models in your resource pack. As you can see here, I have my model and the JSON version of my model, aka the exported one, both in my models item folder. Now open up your model.json text and paste this right after the bottom square bracket. All this does is make sure that your model will display properly on the armor stand's head so that it's scaled up to the size of an actual block. Then you can open up the model of the item that you chose to remodel earlier. Like I said, in my case, this will be the wooden axe. Then go ahead and paste this after the second to last curly bracket. Also, where it says item slash name, replace name with whatever the file name is for your actual model. So in my case, spruce underscore wall. You can put any number you want for the custom model data number, but you have to remember it later so that you can assign that model to that number. Now, finally, you can go back into Minecraft, open up a world, and apply this resource pack in-game so that you can see your model. And here's what the model looks like in-game. Now we're completely done working on the resource pack, let's get started on actually animating it in-game. When I said earlier that we wanted the armor stand to move all over the place, what we really want to do is rapidly teleport the armor stand in a specific direction so that it looks like motion. First, we'll set up a chain of command blocks that control how the animation starts. To control the time of the animation, I'll be summoning an area effect cloud with a duration. Next, I'll summon the armor stand on the left and right side by using the align position. We decided earlier that the doors would open up like this. That means when we summon the armor stand with the model on its head, it has to be exactly in the center of the block. To do this, you can use an execute XYZ command and then summon the armor stand 0.5 away from the X and Z directions. For the Y value, you can just offset it by 0.5 as well so that it lines up with the blocks in the world. These armor stands should have no AI, no gravity, possibly rotation depending on their orientation, tags to identify them, they should be invulnerable, invisible, required persistence, marker, and of course they should have the remodeled item on their head. All this was for the left door, so for the right door I'll just copy and paste the same command and simply change the rotation, the coordinates, as well as the tag. We should also fill the initial doorway with either air or barriers so that the blocks aren't actually still there when the animation starts. If you want to make your animation extra spicy, you can add some play sounds to the beginning of this first chain so that it plays a sound whenever the animation starts. I personally am a fan of the minecraft colon block dot wooden underscore door dot open sound, which just plays when you open a door. Except I'm going to pitch the sound way down because I think it sounds a lot cooler for a bigger door like this. Cool, now we're completely done with the startup command blocks. Next we have to create a chain of command blocks for the repeating section. This will control the timing, the motion, and how the animation finishes. We can start by storing the age of the area effect cloud in a scoreboard called time. Whoops, I forgot, we should probably create a time scoreboard. That way we can just check the area effect cloud scoreboard in time instead of looking at its duration. We'll execute if the area effect cloud has a score of a time greater than zero, and when it has that score, teleport the left and right armor stands clockwise and counterclockwise so that it shows the doors rotating.
Then we'll execute if the area effect cloud again, except this time with a score of when your time is equal to the finishing time of the animation. That sounded really weird, but basically what you want to do is decide how long the animation will take. In my case, the area effect cloud has a duration of 60 ticks, so that's how long the animation will be. So when the area effect cloud has time equals 60, we will play a closing noise, clone the blocks in place so that we have solid blocks again, then kill the armor stand so there's not any glitchiness or lag left behind by the animation. For the clone command, I'll just build the doors in an open state right below so that I can just clone them directly upwards. Now let's go back to the command blocks where we were rotating the armor stands for a minute. You'll notice that I just left them as negative one and positive one, but that's only going to teleport them one degree per tick. With this logic in mind, that would mean that in 60 ticks, each of our doors will rotate 60 degrees. Obviously we needed to run a little faster, so let's try, I don't know, 15 degrees? Whoa, that looks a little too fast. Okay, clearly that didn't work. What we actually have to do is divide the number of degrees, in our case 90, by the number of ticks. So 90 over 60 is 1.5, meaning we'll put in 1.5 for the degrees in the rotating animation. Man, why is there math? That's better. You may have noticed that when the animation finished, it didn't play a sound and it didn't clone the blocks. That's because the time scoreboard starts tracking the area effect cloud's duration the tick after it spawned in, which means our time equals 60, is actually when our area effect cloud is 61 ticks old. To fix this, we can just go back into our summon for the area effect cloud and change it to 61 ticks instead of 60. Damn, what is that, bro? Aren't you glad you wasted quite possibly an hour of your life doing that? Instead of this? Nah, but for real though, this method can be used to create some really awesome stuff like what I showed you at the beginning of the video. The more comfortable you get creating models and then coding the animations, the easier it'll be to create way more extravagant animations than this. Anyways, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Like I said earlier, you can go to the description and find tutorials for how to extract resource packs, or if you just want to download this animation pack that I've created in the tutorial, you can download that in the description as well. Okay, bye.